After leaving the Bolton Falls rest stop, you'd think that most of your climbing is behind you. After all, the rest stop is situated at just about the high point of the ride. But don't be fooled, the second half of the ride is much, much tougher than the first. It's true that the first 13 miles after the rest stop consists pretty much of a descent, punctuated by a few shark's teeth, and no doubt this high-speed trip through the fun zone will give you a lot of confidence. one of the best descents of the day is just before you begin to climb at about mile 60. At this point you begin about a 400 foot climb that unlike the earlier climbs of the day is much much steeper. About halfway up the climb you do get a break as the road flattens out and follows a beautiful little meadow for about a mile or so. But the climbing continues as you follow Cedar Creek Road up through Dayton. Fortunately, the beauty of the climb will do a lot to ease the pain. Unfortunately, my batteries ran out, so I missed the great climb and descent off of 251st Street and Jewel Creek Road. So we pick up again as we leave the town of the center. With about 11 miles to go before the last rest stop. There is a nasty little climb on Lockwood, Lockwood Creek Road. And it's this series of steep little climbs that make the second half of the ride so difficult. This is true even where the descents allow you to carry enough speed to blast your way right over the next hill as you're still burning matches on the climb even if they're high speed climbs. But I've got to say the descent on J.A. Moore Road makes the whole trip worth it. Just watch out for the tight turn at the bottom. There are a few leg sapping little climbs before Daybreak Park, but for the most part, you're not bothered because you're almost there. And after Daybreak Park, you've only got 23 miles to go. What could go wrong? Even the climb out of the river valley is pretty easy. But beware, for the remainder of the ride, except for a few sections, you will either be going up or down. And eventually, even the high-speed rollers take their toll. Add to this a stiff headwind coming out of the south, and you'll see that last 23 miles seems to go forever.
That stiff headwind from the south was carrying with it a lot of clouds. As I watched the few blue skies of the day being blown to the north, At this point, the rollers just seem relentless. But the first glimpse of the West Hills near Portland across the Columbia River certainly give you hope. And don't think the idea of hitching a ride didn't cross my mind. Soon the wind picked up even more, the clouds darkened, and the rain began to fall. But even in the gloom, the beauty of spring could not be suppressed. With about 10 miles to go, there's a great descent into the Salmon Creek floodplain. It's followed immediately by the most famous feature of the rack, the Philida Hill. Less than a half mile long, it attains grades greater than 20% and can only be characterized as demoralizing in a fun but painful sort of way. And with just a few miles to go, there's a great descent on Lakeshore Road. But the sharp left turn onto Northwest Bernie Drive introduces you to the other famous feature of Rack. By itself, this last little climb would be nothing more than a nuisance, but at the end of a hundred mile ride, this little pitch will test your love of cycling. Finally, just a short stroll through the neighborhoods just west of Clark College, and we're done. Don't let the toughness of this ride scare you off. It's beautiful, well run, and will get you in shape for the rest of the cycling season. <laughs> <laughs>